Okay, we have two more people. We have a, a celebrity. He's a man, and he's a wonderful man. His name is Robert Shetterly, and he's a painter and a poet. And his series of paintings travel around the country, and the title is People Who Tell the Truth. Americans, I've made a lot of mistakes today. Thanks. Thank you. I, I have, uh, <laughs> I've never been so honored to be a, the token male at an event. This is, this is wonderful. And I'll be brief, but I want to say first, uh, I wasn't even thinking of saying this, but uh, the mention of Shirley Chisholm made me think that I, I painted a portrait of Shirley Chisholm, and you know, her slogan was, unbought and unbossed. <laughs> which, <clears throat> which explains a lot about who she was and also why she lost. You know? <laughs> I want to tell you quickly about um, a couple of my favorite women who happened to be born in exactly the same year, which was 1880. One of them, the first one, is uh, Jeanette Rankin, who was born at a ranch outside of Missoula, Montana. And when she was 36 in 1916, she was the first woman elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. You know, women didn't yet have the right to vote in this country, but several Western states did, and she was elected. And the very first thing she did in getting into office was a vote against the First World War and the U.S. participation in it. Many, many years later, she became, you know, a lifelong peace activist. And in 1970, nearly 90 years old, she led the Jeanette Rankin Brigades in Washington against the Vietnam War. And at that time, she said, if we had 10,000 women willing to go to prison, we would stop this war. And then she said, but we have 10,000 women sitting on the sidelines while their sons are killed. What this is about, what you are doing here today, you know, is gathering strength to take those kinds of moves. We, these times, as we all know, need that kind of courage. They need that kind of persistence. They need that kind of risk. And this is the great sort of formative moment where we put that together. The other woman who was born in 1880 was Helen Keller. And, and you know, and you all know what she did for, you know, not just disability rights, but she's actually a person who changed the perception in the world of how people with disabilities were perceived. I mean, that's an extraordinary thing. She was also a socialist. And she said one time, and this is the key thing, I think, when you come to think of it, there are no such things as divine, immutable, or inalienable rights. In other words, the Declaration of Independence it's a piece of paper. What does it really mean? She said, rights are things you get when you have the strength to make good your claim on them. That's what this is about, having the strength to make good your claim on them. Well, I have to add one more person there. Mother Jones, Mary Harris, the great labor organizer. When she was 90 years old in 1920, someone came up to her and said, oh, Mother Jones, Mother Jones, isn't it amazing? Women finally have the right to vote. Isn't this amazing? She said, no, I don't think so. She said, who needs the right to vote when you can raise hell? You know? And the point about these coming elections is being willing to raise enough hell that we determine what we can vote for. That's what we need to be doing. You know, to demand that we vote for the right kind of justice, the right kind of conditions, the peace, the economic, and economic disparity, you know, and all these things that are uh, destroying not only the environment, but, you know, our communities. That's where we need to go, and thank you so much.